Hi, my name is Byron Vasquez Jr. I am an actor from Los Angeles, and this is a story about how I was cast in my very first MTV's reality show. So, without further ado, let's roll the slate. Coming soon to MTV, hundreds of kids will compete in a talent competition where they'll be judged on their singing, acting, and dancing. They all think they have what it takes. No! Most of them are sadly mistaken. Reaching for something in the distance. So close you can almost taste it. Raise your inhibition. Feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you. Only you can let it in. No one else can speak the words on your lips. <laughs> to give you a little background about my experience, um, I had always wanted to be an actor since I was a child, but my parents were against it. They wanted me to do a more traditional, go to university and get a traditional nine to five job. At the time, my sister, my older sister was a music major and she had called me one afternoon and told me that she had just auditioned for an MTV reality show and they were looking for people who could either act, sing or dance. And she told me that I should audition. I don't remember how exactly I booked the audition, but I remember getting the audition, and I drove to Santa Monica or Culver City where MTV Studios were. I don't remember exactly which city they are in. In the audition room, there was a camera and there was a man running the casting session. He gave me a monologue that was suspiciously similar to the monologue in the movie, The Blair Witch. And I just want to apologize to Mike's mom and Josh's mom. And I did the monologue as best as I could, I, but I didn't have any real acting training at the time. I'd taken maybe two semesters of a community college acting course, which really, you don't really learn how to act from those types of courses. And that was it. A couple days later, I got a call from the producers of MTV and they asked me if I had a special anecdote or a personal story that would help me stand out uh, to the producers. After a little bit of thinking, I gave him a story, which I will not repeat on this video because that story is another longer video. But I gave him my anecdotal story, and then a couple of days later, I got a call that I booked the show. The producers told me that they were going to courier over to me a contract and some other materials that I needed to film the show. The courier came to my house who brought the contract. He also gave me two sets of sheet music. One was for Natasha Bedingfield's song, Unwritten, and the other was for Alicia Keys' Fallen. They wanted us to be familiar with both songs. They told me that I would definitely be doing Natasha Bedingfield's Unwritten, but only the people that moved on to the final round were going to do Fallen but they wanted all the contestants to be prepared. And that was it. With a stroke of the pen, I signed the contract and I was off to my very first professional MTV job. So the day of shooting came. Um, I remember it was toward the end of the week. I believe it was Thursday or Friday. And it was early in the morning and we shot somewhere around downtown LA in the border of East LA. And we were directed to go to a parking lot of a building. When we parked there, we checked in with the producers of the PA, and then we were guided to a room inside. It was a green room where we were meeting the other contestants, and we were given instructions about how the day was going to proceed. Each of us were given a slip of paper, and on that slip of paper was a way to introduce yourselves when it came to do the judge's introduction. But it was written in a way that it made the person who was saying it sound cocky or arrogant. I remember this one girl, one contestant, she was a dancer and on her slip it said, hi, I'm so-so and I'm gonna be the next J-Lo. Um, one of my biggest concerns was to come across as cocky or arrogant or to make myself look like a fool on the national television. So I asked them if I had to give the line that they gave me. I don't remember what it was, uh, but it was something that would make me literally really arrogant. I decided not to use that line. We were then escorted across the street to the build to the main building where the theater was at. And when we walked in, it was very nerve wracking because we were brought into this theater and we were lined up and on stage in front, in front of the curtains. And there were three judges who were sitting in the audience section, but there was also cranes and lights and smoke. And the directors and producers were sitting in another room so you could never see them. And the three judges that we had were one, it was, um, Lori Ann Gibson, who was in the movie Honey. Let me see what you got. What you gonna do? I was thinking something a little more sexy, maybe in the hips. No. Lenny? We 
We had Kimberly Locke, who was the American Idol season two, one of the finalists or runners up. The star, Kimberly Locke. All right, America, is she going on to the next stage or walking off this one tonight? And we had Matt Sedino, who was at the time known for his so proper role in Days of Our Lives. Hey, Brandon, what do you want? Your body. Those were our judges. So we lined up and we each introduced ourselves, some of us giving the lines that we're giving on paper. And I don't remember what I said exactly, but it was something along the lines of, hi, my name is Byron Vasquez Jr. and I like gymnastics. At the time I was doing gymnastics. After that, the judges gave us the instructions on how the day was going to proceed. We were going to break the competition into three parts. We were going to sing, we were going to dance, and then we were going to act. Then we were going to eliminate five of the contestants and then the top two would go on to the final round. We all went back to the green room and prepared for our first performance. And I will never forget that one of the producers came up to us as we were preparing ourselves mentally. And he said, nice people make boring television. So some of the cast members took that to heart. And what I mean by that was they became catty and a little bit mean uh, just to create I don't know, a sense of, of drama on the show. Two by two, we were taken to the theater. It was my turn to perform. I went on stage and I was really nervous. I was really nervous because again, this was my first time really performing, singing. I've never done that before at that time. This was in 2006. I was on stage with all these lights and cameras and the judges were standing right there and I didn't really know how to sing at the time. I asked my sister who was a music major for tips and then the song started. The song started and I started singing, but because I was nervous, it kind of impacted the way I was singing and I started messing up. Reaching for something in the distance, no one else can feel it for you. So I knew right away that, look, my singing is not going to get me to the next round. <laughs> so I got to do something. I got to surprise him with some sort of uh, performance that's going to take him off guard. So what I started to do was I started to do sign language. I started to sign the song as I was singing. One, it got me off of what I was doing and onto some sort of physical behavior. And two, it really shocked, shocked the judges because they weren't expecting me to start signing and because i was signing it gave them more of a performance it brought me more alive and they were able to kind of forget that i was not a great singer once i finished the performance the judges gave me their feedback and they said that they were shocked and surprised about my use of sign language and they really liked that idea and so that was my singing portion of the competition after that was the dance portion of the competition and how the dance portion of the competition was we were going to do two minutes of dancing, but the music was going to change genres. It went from hip hop to classical to 80s to 50s. It didn't matter. Point of it was your dancing style had to change along with the song. This was the one that I was a little bit most comfortable with because at the time, even though I hadn't really had any singing or dancing or acting classes, I was taking hip hop classes for a couple of years now at that point. And I was exposed to other dancers and jazz and ballet techniques because of being around dancers. So when the music went on, I just started going. I busted out a couple of combination moves that I learned in a hip hop class. And when the music changed to classical, I was able to do a couple of turns that I had picked up just by watching some of the dancers and I tried my very best to change which style of singing or style of music and again I wanted to throw in an element of surprise so what I did is I threw in a back handspring or a backflip and a toe touch which is a type of jump when I got feedback they told me that they really were surprised by my athleticism and I felt I did well in that portion of the competition as well. The final part of the competition was, or the beginning of the competition, was the acting. Now this was the one that was very, it was very personal to me because obviously this is what I want to be doing for the rest of my life. This is what I want to be doing. This was most personal to me. I remember we took a break, it was, about, it was lunchtime. So we were fed, we were giving a 30 minute lunch. At the time we were also given the script. The script was long. It was probably about eight to 10 pages long. And I remember that the script was full of monologues and tongue twisters. One tw tongue twister that I could re remember perfectly was Mrs. Miss Fish Sauce Shop. We had to memorize that, add in all these tongue twisters. And then the story was very involved. The story was that I or all the contestants were coming home to talk to our father because something was physically wrong. We were feeling sick. Our father had told us that we were robots and that our battery was dying. And so we started to malfunction. So essentially we were going to die.
in the script that says that the robot starts to malfunction in all sorts of interesting ways. But they only gave us about 30 minutes to memorize the script and then we had to perform it. And the producers told us they wanted us to perform as if it was real. So we really had to go in there and, and really sell the malfunction and sell all these, these tongue twisters and monologues as best as we could. We did the scene with Matt Sedino and I remember we started off in sort of a box or sort of a door. When the scene started, when they called action, the stores opened up and we had to walk out there and do the performance. I did not want to look stupid on camera in front of national television, so I really played it conservatively. I went on stage and I just kind of played it as if I was me telling my father that I'm dying. Uh, and when it came to the malfunctioning part, I just kind of I just kind of died. Afterwards, when I got the feedback from the judges, they told me we thought that you were going to add some of these hip hop moves while you're malfunctioning, but I told them I didn't want to overdo it and I didn't want to come across as a joke on MTV. I felt like that was my worst uh, part of the performances. When we were, when I was meeting all the contestants, they, each of them told us that they had a skill in either acting, singing, or dancing, but not all three. And MTV sold this as if we were going to be good at all three of them. After everybody went, the judges brought us back together at the theater and they were going to give us the final feedback. They put us all in line again, and they brought up two contestants forward. Uh, they gave both of them the feedback, and they gave both of them something they could improve upon, and they eliminated one. They brought up four people, and again, each of them got feedback, and each of them got some more they could improve, but then they all got eliminated, and it was just me. They brought me forward, and they told me that I, congratulations, Byron, and the other contestant, you are now moving on to the next and final round. The final round. The final round went actually a lot faster because it was towards the end of the day and we needed to wrap. All the contestants, the ones that were eliminated, were sent home. They had to go get their stuff and leave. And each of them were given about $200 cash and so they left. So it was just me and the other contestant. We were told to change clothing because they wanted it to seem as if it was another day. So we changed our outfits. And then in the green room, we filmed, each of us individually filmed a montage of us preparing for our final performance. Now, this performance was going to be different. It was going to involve all three of the skills, singing, acting, and dancing into one final performance. So what they did was they gave us a monologue. We had to do the monologue, which was gonna then go into the song Fallen by Alicia Keys, which we had to sing. And in that song, there was going to be a dance break where you had to do a, a, a freestyle dance. So they brought the first contest of the girl went first. And then I went up on stage and I began to do the monologue. Halfway through the monologue, the director called cut. Something went wrong technically behind the scenes and I had to restart the entire thing as if I had never done the performance at all. And that's when I learned that even in a reality show, they do different takes. I did the performance, I did the monologue, I did Alicia Keys Fallen, and I did the dance. And that was it. When we were done, me and the contestant were brought together on stage and it happened really quickly. They announced and it was the other contestant. Um, I remember they dropped streamers, had lights flashing, they presented her a check of $500 and they crowned her uh, the triple threat. They escorted me off stage where I had to go get my clothes and my stuff and to leave basically and um, they gave me $200 cash and that was um, my experience working on an MTV's reality show. So the aftermath. The episode aired on September 19th, 2006 on MTV. It was either right before or right after TRL. I think it was right before TRL. And my episode was called You Robots. And that's when I realized that um, things were a little bit different because the TV show had now been changed to MTV's Little Talent Show. And when they showed the performances, each all the performances that we did throughout the day, they didn't show one individual performance, but they cut as a montage that everyone's performances in every category were shown kind of in clips. And they only showed the people's worst performances. And so I didn't really make a lot of the episode because they were really focusing in on specific bad parts of the performance. And that's when I realized that the title of the episode, the title of the TV show was called MTV's Little Talent Show. A couple of the people in the episode, after, after the episode aired on TRL, they were voted. People got to vote for the littlest talent of the day. And 
that was really difficult because one of the friends that I made that day, she was hilarious, she was fun to be around, she made the day really worthwhile, but because of the nature of how we were giving the acting material and how quick we had to memorize these lines and what they put into the lines, um, her performance, the way they cut it, ended up looking awful. And, but it was so hilarious that she actually went on to win Littlest Talent of the Day. <laughs> Because of that, I'm glad that I didn't get as much airtime as I thought I was going to because I didn't have that many over-the-top moments on the show. Something that I learned from that experience was that I knew, I knew that I wanted to act, I knew that I want to pursue this, this job professionally. I loved performing, I loved being on stage, I loved having the camera and the lights there. I just did not ever want to do a reality show again. Uh, I'm not comfortable talking in front of the camera. This is a lot of work for me to do. I much prefer creating characters and living a, living under imaginary circumstances in front of the camera. Although I did do one other reality show, but um, but it was for very different reasons. After the episode aired, I remember one time I was I went to a coffee shop, and I was sitting in a computer that was facing the front door. Uh, it was a glass door facing the streets, and a group of teenagers walked by. And then one girl ran back, she flung open the coffee shop door, and she said, So I remember that, and the second time that I was recognized, I was going to the movies with my younger brother, and I was giving the ticket taker my ticket, and he said, Hey, you were on MTV, weren't you? It was a lot of fun, and like I said, uh, a couple of things that I've learned doing this experience was that not everything that you see on television is 100% true, but not everything that you see is also a lie. It's distorted truth, it's distorted reality. So just remember that. The other thing is you have to advocate for yourself if you're an actor. You don't have to do what they want you to do even if they put pressure on you to do it. You can choose to say no. And the other thing is just have fun. I had a lot of fun working on that episode. It was my first foray into really the business. And without that experience, I don't think that I would be here today because I knew from that moment going forward that I was going to be an actor. And that's what I'm still doing now. Thank you very much for listening to my story. Please subscribe to my channel because I will be posting more stories of my past plus other acting content. And uh, thank you very much. And that's a wrap.